I didn't care. I just I had nothing to do but race around. And if I wasn't doing a talk, I was selling a talk. And it was just and, and a lot of them started to shuffle because I was becoming famous. And I promised I said the promise then was the wrong promise. I to me, I promised 10 percent. So if a guy who was a general manager earning 100 grand, which today is like a million. He would earn 110 grand. Well, 10 grand to pay me $100 is like 1%, no issues, right? What I should have done is take a percentage because I could have then taken a percentage of all the increase of State Farm or, or, or State Mutual or Metropolitan or Proof, but I wasn't smart enough. And, and Chip, God bless him, did the best he could, but he didn't have that little factoid that I now have. I, I help companies now, but I take a percentage or I take stock or I take ownership. Because there's, and today, people in your and my business, you might as well take it. There's no, this is the first time we're in history, no limit, because the game isn't the game. In the last two years, because of COVID confinement cocoon, everything's international, everything's in Zoom, everything's in cell phone, everything's in the computer. And for the first time, the businesses that, you know, we're limited to America now. I mean, I've worked in 80 countries, but, and I'll do it in the third segment, but it, it is, we're in the most excitingly amazing time ever if you're awake. Now, in high school, you and I read the same stuff. Great writing, but it is the best of times and the worst of times. And that's where he stopped. It's the best of mm. times, comma, if you have the mindset to find out where the opportunities is, because problems are opportunities in disguise waiting to have you make your fortune. Absolutely. A thousand percent. Good. Couldn't agree more. Okay. I, 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 want, I want to keep going on the challenge part. And I feel compelled to go to the third segment. I feel compelled to go to this exciting future that we're creating, kind of jump ahead. And I'd love to just to dive straight to what is it that you're creating now, Mark Victor? And, and should I call you Mark or Mark Victor? Mark, I didn't Mark, ask you Mark before. Is fine. Um, okay, Mark. Mark Victor is only because there, I used to live in Orange County, California, Corona Del Mar, Newport Beach. And, and uh, beautiful. We lived on the ocean. I'd done really well, of course. Sold a half billion books, so you know you do pretty well when you do that many books. I'm going to sell a billion, which is why we got 144 rejections. When you think about it, I wrote the business plan called the Wild the Business Plan, and you know if I had been in a in a seat of Random House, which has given me a million dollars three times to write a book like my book One Minute Millionaire and Cash in a Flash and and uh, Cracking the Millionaire Code, they paid for that. But back when I hadn't sold anything and I wrote down, I'm going to sell a billion books. You could just, I just see, go inside the head. They're reading this and they go, <laughs> the Bible sold a billion and a half, but no human being can do that. Well, I was on the biggest podcast with Amazon, uh, Mark Devereaux, and, and twice now. And, and Mark said, you know, you, the second time he said, you are really the Roger Bannister of books. And I said, he said, do you know who Roger Bannister is? I said, of course, I know all the stories. You know who Roger Bannister was? Of course, of course. Yeah, Four minute wild guy. I said, I said, but Mark, do you know what happened the next week? He said, no clue. I said, 119 people ran a four minute mile because what happened is it broke a mental barrier, the mindset barrier, the limitations here, the limitation isn't here. And that's why imagination, Einstein, my teacher's teacher said is more important than reality because I think you got a physical body, you got a brain, which is unfortunately the only thing school teaches. Then you got a mind, which has two basic aspects a couple but intuition and imagination but then you've got a soul which is bigger than all that and your soul is infinite because genesis says you're made in the image and likeness of, of god's stuff and if god's infinite then you're made with infinite stuff that makes you infinite and so in the audiences i have people point at their temples and go hmm that's interesting because we could spend a whole time together on just that point because there's all of us are over endowed, not under endowed. But, oh no, man, you are an engineer, you are a doctor, you are a janitor, you are a school teacher. That is a job, which means I, I redefine the acronym just over broke because I say that Bob Proctor and I created MSIs. We own two companies together, and he's a genius, just passed away. But Bobby and I created multiple sources of income, and then Bob Allen and I, in our books, created multiple streams of income. Same thing. Anybody with just one stream of income is going to be broke and, and, and broke in. And right now, there are evil people out there trying to break the middle class. And what I'm saying is, no, no, let's go the other direction. You, I just did, I do YouTube minutes called Mark's Minutes every day. And I say you're either depressing and, and contracting or you're expressing. Now, if you're depressing, you're in a wrong place for you. Because you are made it with infinite stuff that's meant to express all the days of your life. And the only way you get there, back to hustling my own book, 
is I wrote it with my wife, ask the bridge from dreams or destiny, because you got a great destiny. But if you put up the stop signs and we call five road, four, seven roadblocks to stopping, right? Fear and doubt, indecision, uh, you know, disconnection. We show you how to overcome every one of them. You are in a lose-lose. And I'm saying we're in the greatest time ever to be in a win-win, but you got to be careful. Even during a depression, 25% of the people made fortunes, 75% lost because they believe fear, which I define fear is a one-way elevator going down. Fear is faith in reverse, right? Whereas with the apostle Paul said, faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence and not, things not seen. I saw myself doing four talks a day because that's what I wanted to do. And then all of a sudden the audience came to me just to finish that story. And I said, oh my God, that's the best story I ever heard. Do you have it in a book? But you keep... <laughs> I finally said, okay, I'll self-publish a book. The first book I did, Stand Up, Speak on Win. Now remember, I'm doing little audiences, six people, 10 people in little insurance offices. So it's not that big a deal. It was a big deal to me but and a big deal to them because I transformed a lot of their lives. Uh, thank you, God. But the, the point is, is it... Um, I sold 20,000 copies at $10 each. That's $200,000. Well, 50 years ago, that's like $2 million. I'd, I'd, I'd re-arrive. I'd, I'd come back. And, and you say, well, how important is that? Well, the smartest guy I deal with every day that's my mentor and friend who has to go on mentoring because he's rich, successful, wants an anonymity. But he and I were talking. When the money value goes down, moral values go down. And right now, we've had money values go I mean, because the really rich people are doing really awful things to to corrupt the public and steal all the money from the middle class. Well, the middle class is what makes America great. Free enterprise makes America great. Andrew Carnegie helped create free enterprise in America, and, and Napoleon Hill wrote about it with 500 people. And and while Hill, Dr. Hill got us out of the Depression by writing all the fireside chats, did you know he did that? I did not know that he Napoleon wrote, Hill wrote those for the president. For FDR, huh. you know, nothing to fear but fear itself. That's Nap, Dr. Hill. They called him Nap the Sap because he was really rich and got $1 a, a, a year for helping the president write speeches. Well, in 1898, we had a depression in America, and I'm afraid we're going into another one, and I'm going to do everything I can to help the people that listen to your podcast and my stuff not go into it. But it was Wallace Waddles wrote The Science of Getting Rich, and he said, he wrote that book, and then what happened? Six people broke through. We had the automobile with Henry Ford, because he read the book. We had Edison create a little thing called electricity. We had the phone come out. We had all these breakthroughs. So we're in a greatest time of breakthroughs in human history, and there's only one guy visible, but I love him, and that's Elon Musk. I mean, he owns six, back to MSIs, multiple sources of incomes. He owns six multi-billion dollar companies, and the last one he's created is He's created a new phone to compete with the iPhone for a very simple reason. It's called Tesla Pi. Do you know this? I, no, the phone. No, no. So, so, so Elon Musk has the greatest car. It's got twenty billion dollars worth of AI. So I didn't build a car. I built an AI machine on wheels. And and uh, so Tim Cook, who thinks he's smarter than anyone because he had the first trillion dollar company back to breakthroughs. Now we got six trillion dollar companies in America, and we got Elon Musk about to become the first human trillionaire. Now, just so people are listening, go, that's too big for me. Well, a million, a thousand thousands, a million, a thousand millions, a billion, a thousand billions, a trillion. That's a lot of money. Anyhow, so Elon Musk has his top five guys stolen, as far as he's concerned, by Tim Cook. He said, Timmy, you made a bad mistake. But what a cool life. So what did he do? He created the Tesla Pi phone, which is just coming out, it's going to cost $650. It'll have, instead of a little uh, bite of information, it's going to have two terabytes. So you can have 20,000 movies on your iPhone. You put it in the sun, it charges up in two hours for the next 60 hours. I mean, he's got 12 major breakthroughs. The point is we're at the greatest breakthrough time in history, but none of that makes the news because the news is controlled negatively. And that's why podcasts, like the one we're doing right now, are going zooming up because people listen to them and then they say, oh my God, I got to share this with this, 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 this person because I've never heard Mark Victor Hansen before. But if he's telling the truth, and I am, that, you know, in the highest part of the hierarchy of Maslow is truth and beauty. It goes beyond self-realization, self-actualization. The point is we're in the first no limit time if you're awake. Now, if you're 
depressed, you go, oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. I'm not, go create new work. You weren't, you're not limited to being a janitor. You're not limited to being a school teacher. That's what the preface was here. Does that all make sense, Matt? Everything is really connecting. And I, I draw back to something amazing that you've shared. Uh, and on the scope of the timeline of your life, you in, in or around 1974, bankrupt. Big company, big idea, and it blew up quickly and you were down. And before you know it, a few years later, you've sold a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of books and you're back up and you took it from the rock bottom back up to the top and have continued based on your philosophy of asking the three questions. So if there's someone out there who's down right now and they're depressed uh, and you know there, there's this world of opportunity out there, but they're down and depressed, help, let's help them get up. How might we help them get up and open their eyes? 